Kathleen Munro was born on the 13th of March 1917 at College Road in Birmingham when the First World War was still raging. She was an only child and her parents, Hector and Beattie, were very protective of her. Her father had patented and produced the first transparent refillable fountain pen, one of which was used by George Bernard Shaw, who actually attended the house for a minor repair. Perhaps this influenced her love of writing, drawing and inspired her calligraphy skills. Always an artistic child, Kath attended Hastings Road School until she was 14 and on her leaver certificate her teachers noted that she had a marked artistic ability. From September 1931, Kath attended the School of Dress Design in Birmingham where she developed her skills for designing innovative dresses, advertising posters and for still life drawing. Her fun-loving personality transferred onto the faces of the models wearing the design she created and the Art Deco period covering the 20s and 30s influenced her early work. Her mother Beattie was very strict and disapproved of the natural form component of Kathleen's college artwork and those semi-nude sketches remained concealed under Kathleen's bed for over 50 years. After leaving art college in July 1934, Kath attended evening classes until the Second World War broke out in September 1939. Still, her parents would not let her work, demanding that her role in life was to look after her grandmother and to help with chores around the house. Kath often said the best thing that ever happened to her was when the Second World War began because it was then that she was conscripted to work in a factory at Bellis and Morecambe Limited, engineers in Ladywood, Birmingham. Freedom was a shock for Kath who had to travel on two buses to and from work, but ever resilient, she got on with her life. It was in 1947 that Kath's artistic talents were eventually spotted by Bellis and Morecambe and she was moved to the company drawing office where she met her lifelong friends Molly and Laurie McLaren. From then on, many of the watercolours created by Kathleen showed scenes of Devon, Wales and Scotland, places that she visited with them. It was in 1950 that Kath joined the planning department of Birmingham City Council, where she produced a long series of unique artist watercolour impressions of proposed urban developments. These images were supplemented by photographs taken after each development was completed. In the drawing office she met another long-standing friend, Archie Exton, who was an accomplished draftsman and fellow artist. Together they produced beautiful pen and ink sketches of local and historical scenes across the region. In the 1960s, Kath became the proud owner of a proper camera and diligently began recording all her material, always labelling and dating the places and the images that she captured. When Kath retired from the planning department in 1977, Archie produced a cartoon version of This Is Your Life, which followed the comic style of many of their Christmas and greetings cards, each one customised for the colleagues they worked with. One of Kath's greatest skills was calligraphy, which the Lord Mayor's office would commission, getting Kath to complete the visitor's book of dignitaries and to produce illuminated scrolls for special guests to the city. Kath produced one of these on behalf of the city of Birmingham to record a visit by the Queen Mother. When the scroll was completed, she took it to the Lord Mayor for his signature. However, she was mortified when he took out a ballpoint pen and in no uncertain terms, Kath told him that if he didn't use a fountain pen, then he would not get the scroll. The Mayor found a proper pen. Kath continued to produce certificates, cards and coats of arms well into her 80s. Family members would have beautiful verses written for them on decorated cards throughout the years and it was only on the introduction of computers that Kath stopped calligraphy work for Birmingham City Council. Artwork was embedded in everything Kath did. Having never married or had children, instead she devoted her time to several charities and to selling her pictures to raise funds for cancer research. The relief of cancer was a subject especially dear to her heart. She had survived breast cancer surgery in the 80s and sadly when it returned 14 years later she underwent a second mastectomy. 
Kath's positive attitude to dealing with adversity is reflected in a poem she wrote during her post-operative stay in hospital. A poem by Kathleen Munro following her operation in October 2000. Nurses, helpers, black, brown and white, what a very welcome sight. Patients too, of every hue, being told just what to do. Everything explained most fully, every pill and every pulley. The carers, surgeons and their teams, mending all my troubled dreams. Helping me to firmly state, I'm not ready for heaven's gate. I just thought you had to know, my other breast just had to go. And though I'm feeling rather flat, I'm not downhearted, don't think that. Now, before I dress each morn, I look down on my flattened form and see all of my belly quivering there just like a jelly. I didn't realise before the op how useful were these boobs on top because you see they blocked the view, especially when there were two. Double vision in my eye caused by the anaesthetic. Don't worry, dear, it soon will pass. They were most sympathetic. Meanwhile, just wave your arm about. Don't get a frozen shoulder. And so I blink and wink and wave, thankful to have missed the grave and happily grow older. Kathleen is remembered as a kind, gentle and generous woman who enjoyed her own company. She amassed a huge collection of artwork during her lifetime, which even included her first birthday card and her childhood sketchbooks. Found under her bed after her death were family letters dating from 1829 and trinkets from bygone years. Kathleen Munro was an extraordinarily talented woman who will never be forgotten by her family and friends and those fortunate enough to have experienced her artwork.